Thank you, Mary. Such, such an incredible story. Um, would love to dig a little bit further into kind of the social enterprise components here. So Maya, can you tell us a little bit about Bagel Bagel Shop and why, why Atina decided to start Bagel Bagel Shop? Well, we are like, a, as I said, the feminist organization, a lot of women in entrepreneurs and activists in it. So we were always like trying to, we are not funding by the state. We don't have funds by the state, even if we are practically the only safe place for the traffic women in Serbia and all the institutions in the system, like prosecution, prosecutors, uh, police, uh, uh, center for social works and social welfare and other NGOs are referring those who are in the crisis situation or in need for the support. So it was one of the challenging issues, how to sustain, how to obtain the funds for smooth uh, functioning of all these programs. So uh, uh, we have around 200 women, 250 women now in the programs, different, is it safe housing or psychosocial support they needed, or we are covering whole territory of Serbia. So also legal representation and others. So it is a program that was uh, needed funds uh, uh, to maintain quality and continuity when we are talking about the need of those women. And, uh, and uh, uh, so it was a challenging issue and there is no perfect donor that, is, uh, that, that will respond to those needs that we have. So we, because of that, uh, we, we uh, decided to have our, our own income uh, generating activities. So before Bagel Bagel, we have 10 years or 15 years ago, I don't remember, I don't recall, we also organize, we have an income generate, we are producing those women who are in our programs are producing different corporate gifts from different materials and we are selling them so they have their own money when they are in our programs because they can. So this was one of the activity that we organized 15 years ago. Uh, and we started to cooperate a lot with private companies. But as I said, those employment opportunities from the private companies were in ad hoc matter. They provide us with the practice or skill building for the, for the women, but only if uh, they decided for a few months, for three months and they stopped. So it was also something that we don't want to like give promises and, uh, and offer to the women something that we cannot stand behind. That was the a second reason. And the third reason is that, that I already said, it was the gap. They didn't have, a lot of women didn't have possibility to go to schools, uh, to, to find, uh, uh, they were not competitive in the employment market. I don't know, so like simple things, like working on the cashier, as a cashier, you need two hours of focus education to learn how to, to, to work that, but they didn't have, and they don't have opportunity, that kind. So we were thinking about that when we started to think about this social enterprise uh, adventure as a teen, as an activist, activists, and we said, okay, we have to do something. There was an opportunity of one of our uh, donors back then. They said, we will fund, fund five organizations from 20 in our network that want to uh, think that they want to uh, apply for, for social business for their sustainability. And that is when we started to think about the bagels. Why bagels? There, there are no bagels in Belgrade and Belgrade is a huge city and bagels are like a famous, famous, delicious, uh, like baked, uh, uh, like past free and whatever. So, and you can do whatever with the bagels. You can make the deli delicious and it is like, also it is not a bakery and it is not a restaurant. So different skills you can gain through that. You know, it is like baking and work in the kitchen. We have delicious salmon with our cream cheese chai with chives and we have like pastrami and we have delicious. And, and you can also uh, learn a lot of different skills through, through, through the bagel shop. And we are not just bagel shop, we have a shop and still it is ongoing and working. But 70% of our revenue you comes from from catering actually we made these small bagels of 22 grams i don't know it is like 
uh, one ounce or something like that. It is a small, small, small bagel, and we make mini bagel sandwiches with. I don't know, we have 20, 30 different tastes with mozzarella, with pesto, with what we have. So, so we are catering and we can cater for 250 people, actually. So this is our main revenue. And we started that uh, five years ago. We started to think about well, almost six years ago, actually, in 2015, we opened a bagel shop and uh, we started to plan like a year before and uh, that was like uh, the idea was to make the opportunity for those women to learn to bake to, to cook to distribute to to communicate with the others and to work in the team to have practice for them the another is to employ some of these women and the main thing is to make the profit that goes to uh, our programs and uh, and uh, to make our own money that we can do uh, 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 whatever we think that it is a need for 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 our problems. So I will stop here. Thank you. Well, I think as many New York residents, we can all agree that the bagels are always a good choice. So <laughs> I'm hungry after listening to that. Um, Mary, can you tell us a little bit about Afghan Women Network as well as the the restaurant that you founded previously? I'm sorry. Thank you so much. I really also became so inspired and I want to first of all get some information from Maya for our work. <laughs> I'm angry right now. Uh, uh, I wanted to share something about Afghan Women Network as I said before, like this is one of the biggest women's network in Afghanistan, which we have more than 147 a woman lead organization under this umbrella, and we have more than 3,900 individuals. Um, the main uh, focus of uh, AWN is that to, to build uh, unity and solidarity among women's group and uh, do more focus on uh, women's uh, political participation and women protections, uh, and as well promoting women's economic uh, status. That is the main um, component of uh, our activities. But since I have joined AWN as an executive director, that was the peace talk as a start in Afghanistan, and we have tried to uh, organize and to establish uh, Afghan Women's Coalition for Peace through our network, which is another sort of like a network and coalition with most women, wo Afghan women leaders have joined. And there was uh, the reason why we have established this, it was uh, women of Afghanistan was ignorant and no one has considered women as a, a responsible citizens of the country. And due to that, that we have decided like to be uh, a bit loud and to, to be wise of people and to raise wise of Afghan people for the peace process, which we had the privilege in AWN and work closely with other or, uh, civil society organization and particularly women lead organization to be wise of women of Afghanistan at the peace table. And we have do all our lobby and advocacy for meaningful participation of women in the peace process and peace talks in Afghanistan, which is still we see we have a long way, a long way when we see like everyone is talking about inclusion, but when we see in practical, it is a still. We have a gap and we have to, to fight for that. And uh, AWN is now leading this coalition. And besides, uh, we are trying to um, be as much as possible uh, in close contact with different uh, entities, particularly those countries that they are involved in the peace process of Afghanistan. Um, for my other activities, especially for the Supporting the first shelter, uh, the reasons uh, when I established the first restaurant, uh, that was uh, I have learned from uh, during my experience uh, running shelter, most women were run away due to um, lack of economic or due to that they were under pressure, under violence because they didn't have uh, um, uh, access to 
resources. And uh, we have found uh, the first things at which we have started, that was a small catering center inside the safe house. We found like uh, one day, one woman have told me after one or one and a half year, she said that I have learned more than 80,000 halves. And it was very interesting, like she has learned that money, even she was uh, a stay in the shelter, but she has learned when they receive order and she was one of the cook and she has learned. And then we realized this is one of the best uh, approach that to how to, to empower women through economics. And then we said that, okay, let's, we should do something. And I am, I'm so glad and uh, uh, I'm happy that uh, my husband has uh, supported the idea. Um, unfortunately, we didn't got any specific support, but we had like some support from the organization, the uh, Afghan Women Skills Development Center, the organization which they have run shelter, uh, that they have also the management and the leadings, uh, the board have said that, okay, that's a privilege for women to be, to serve their families and to work in a safe place. Uh, then it was very difficult to decide like this should be a special restaurant for families and it should be run by women. That was another challenge because there was no such a restaurant in Afghanistan to fully run by women. And then we said that, okay, this, let's start. I, to be honest, I always, when I see background of my work, all the challenging work when we have started, all of us were very challenged. And uh, 2015, when we decided to have this restaurant and uh, it was difficult to give a name for that, uh, Bos is one of the historical place of Afghanistan and I, there was a lot of history about that. And then when we entered to that place, they has the logo of that uh, sign of Boast. And then we said, okay, at least we should have this restaurant by name of Boast. And it was, we have started to run fully by women. We have put some restriction. We said that this is a family restaurant. When men are allowed that they should come with their families which is another challenge. Uh, mostly when sometimes men comes when they were alone and they didn't allow them, especially if, uh, friends from civil society, they call me and say that, what sort of restaurant do you have? We are coming here to support you guys, but they didn't allow us <laughs> because they went alone. Uh, then it is now we see like there is several had a restaurant run by women, which is other women also got encouraged and um, I found like that was the best way like to uh, empower women, uh, more than 25 girls and women during the last five years that they got now, they are independently that they have stored their business, they have stored their works. And the restaurant is one of the very famous and we are providing the traditional food of Afghanistan. Like uh, you can only find this food at home. And all is like pure and they are the delicious when Maya was talking about the delicious food. And now it is also um, Boost is providing that kind of services. And uh, we are also uh, received some order from some uh, NBC's offices. It is all friend try to support, uh, but the challenges, the difficulties is still there. From the beginning till now, security is one of the biggest challenge, unfortunately, in Afghanistan, and particularly for women. And unfortunately, due to COVID, that we have faced a lot, of, a lot of challenges and difficulties, which was restaurant was for a while closed, and the girls was uh, they became jobless. Some of them when they went to their home and they were looking for a job. Um, yeah, that is all which we are, the main purpose was to how to empower, how to encourage, because mostly when women come to the shelters that they were stamped by bad women, one issue, the other thing was, they were also were, always people were seeing to them as a victim, but we uh, prove it that these women, they just need some space to provide them. And now they prove that they are not 
no more victims. They can support themselves. They can support their families. Uh, and now they are, most of them are running their own business and their own families. That's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so obviously both of you are tackling some really large goals and you know, going after this big impact. Um, I would love to hear from you on how, how do you measure success with both, you know, either your social enterprises or your nonprofits. Oh, can I? Sure. So, so it is like we, uh, how the we perceive ourselves. Uh, you know, when we are lucky. First, I have to say we are very lucky in 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 Athena because we managed to we have this time and opportunity to support for longer term. It is, it is not like a single intervention. It is not that you provide someone with the safety for a few months. It's something that we are, our, our programs are, are framed in the way that it can give a long-term support in, in, and, and to, to, to support in the needs that, are, that came to us from the, from the woman and the girl not by ourselves. We don't have a framework. And we are always in a, it is very dynamic job. It is always revised. It is not something that we can offer. We are always in the revision of these programs. And, and um, this is why I have to say now after, it was very hard in the first five years. Now after 18 years, you can go and look behind and you can see like the thousands of women and the girls that are young, successful, like strong women afterwards. And the success is how we measure it is like a seed you put in the ground and you like just respond to the needs of those women in the crisis situation, uh, trauma response, uh, and for months and for years. And when they go out and regain control of their lives, it is just like a seed that started to grow. And it is the process afterwards. So when, when they feel self-confident and they can say no, and they are satisfied with their lives in aftermath, that is how we measure success. Of course, there are other metrics. There are other scientific things that we are measuring, of course, to monitor the, the success rate and what are we doing to revise. But actually, in the social business, I have to say that after five years, we have we employed almost 20 of women within our bagel shop and within our catering, uh, both part time and, and full time. Uh, it, it is now, now much harder in the COVID because we have now just six women that are fully employed in the bagel. We before this COVID year, we had 85 women who, who gained skills, different skills, even work with us. Uh, um, they had trainings and then with our case management uh, and the cooperation and partnership with private companies, mostly, uh, mostly all of them find their, the, the first jobs in, their, in that restaurants or hotel industries and others. And the success was in the COVID. We had also three trainings and three practices when it was not a lockdown for 14 women, both from refugee and migrant women and girls that are here and, both, and, and citizens of Serbia. So this is like somehow how we measure what, what really social enterprise provided our regal directly to those women. And uh, of course we are, uh, we are, we are like uh, uh, measuring with, with, with that kind of, uh, 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 with, with, with the profit as well. So we were like uh, profitable after two years. So it is really, it was a startup. We started, our business plan was like when we made it, it was 46,000 uh, euros back then, but we didn't find 46 because this organization gave us 22. But um, the measure of, uh, uh, but and we opened it because we set the date. We knew that we will have 22, and we said, we, even if we don't fundraise the rest, we will open on 14th of April. So we open it on 14th of April 2015. And after a year, we, uh, we, 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 uh, we started to make so much uh, revenue that we entered the VAT system. So it is not for celebration for the restaurants because it is like a higher tax, 
but uh, but we opened the champagne because it was like the, the it's shown that we can grow so we from that day uh, uh, after two years we break even and then it was like uh, it was a good few years and uh, with the covid now we also need needed to revise it a little bit but we are open so this is a success for the for the restaurant uh, and uh, and the catering business it is a success in this crisis situation absolutely um mary could you share a little bit about measuring success for me, like the biggest success is that those women people were seeing to them as a victim. Now they are independent. I'm, I'm very satisfied with that from my, uh, as an activist, as an advisor, as a one to work for women's rights. That was the biggest uh, achievement for us. Uh, the second thing is that it was also was now that they have started their own. Some of them have started their own business, like that they have to start with a small catering, which is another uh, good sign. And uh, the third one was uh, most other women organization and women uh, also got encouraged to learn and they, should, they also have started their own restaurant which right now we have like three, four restaurants run by women. Um, last not least, <laughs> it is also was the first time to provide opportunity for most women, which they are wife of like ministers, aisle officers, but they never have chance to go to restaurant. And now that place has provided this space for families that they come. This is another, as a woman, uh, activists that I'm seeing that we have provide all those opportunity for women. Uh, yes, the challenge is always there. As, as I said, security is one of the biggest challenge, which is unfortunately being woman in Afghanistan is a challenging, but be a woman to work and to have some business, that is another challenge. But I am very glad and I'm happy that I have the support of my husband. Like he was uh, supporting me. Uh, but financially, we face a lot of challenges because it is not still uh, not sustained because it's not open for all. And COVID was one of the biggest challenge, unfortunately, but like uh, it was too difficult. We didn't have any income, but we have to, to pay like the taxes. We have to, to pay the rent. And this is another challenge, which is I see. Because it's still like women, when they have some businesses, COVID-19 has a lot of bad impact on uh, businesses. And especially for those women that they have a small businesses, it has a lot of negative impact. Uh, but I'm, I'm very glad. I'm very happy that uh, uh, for those women that they are not able to join the restaurant, they are still in the safe house that they have the catering system. And they're also, it's another way of learning and earning money for those women. That is, we are also have provide a lot of um, training for outsiders, for other women that they were residents of other shelters that they also come and have learned from these courses that when we have, uh, there was also some opportunity for other women that they are looking for job. Now they are working. And last not least, some of our girls, when they come from shelter, some of them are right now, they are also studying part-time. Uh, they are going to university, which they never dream it because even they were not at the school. Now they are going to university. And I'm, from my perspective, uh, I'm very happy, but from financial perspective, when we see it, we have a lot of loss, <laughs> a lot of loss for that, which is, I hope that it recover back after now that everything is open. I hope that they could uh, have more resources and to run the restaurant. Yes, it's certainly been a challenging year and kind of looking forward to, to see what's ahead there. Um, I know you mentioned kind of working with other shelters, things like that. Um, maybe starting with Maya, 
Um, would love to hear how, how you leverage partnerships either with other community organizations, government leaders, other businesses, working with other partners to, to help maximize your impact. Yeah. Well, well, we are like, uh, as, uh, as uh, Athena, we are very well uh, uh, networked within the region and, uh, and we have our own uh, Women Against Violence Network in Serbia. And we are cooperating with women's organization in ex-Yugoslavia, in all, all the uh, states of ex-Yugoslavia and Albania. Uh, uh, we are cooperating also with uh, with uh, European networks. Uh, as for private companies, I have to say that we as uh, we are, it is not just a business when we are talking about bagel social business. It is also the platform where we talk about uh, women's issue in another way than Athena. And it was very important for us to promote women uh, we, uh, women businesses, as Mary said, it is it is of most importance. So we so, so we also uh, mostly uh, uh, more than forty percent of all the materials that we are using are from the women's uh, women uh, uh, businesses in the Serbia and around the Belgrade and from rural area. But we are also promoting. We are making every year a fair of business uh, of women businesses here in Belgrade. So, so this is like just to advocate for uh, for uh, more uh, like uh, possibilities for, for 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 them. The other thing is that as a Tina, for eighteen years we built a network, as I said, and this is the reason why also Bagel succeeded. So we were like. Uh, uh, supported with our Athena's community to buy to, to the first this step to buy our products and they after the first buy they liked it so they continue to buy it and um, it was also supported uh, in that way from different banks private companies that we cooperated and that supported women issue that want to be socially responsible and we use that, that connections to promote other issues that we are advocating, anti-discrimination against sexual har harassment in the companies and other things. So this is, this is one thing. Also, we are organizing this um, uh, for big companies, these cook-offs. It is like a team building thing. For, 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 for them. So we also, uh, through that is something that we are promoting, not just, uh, not just our products, but also some, some topics that we want to, to tackle. Uh, we cooperate, we have memorandums of understandings with, 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 with the state institutions like prosecutors and others. And this model of economic empowerment for what, what we made for, for survivors of trafficking is something that is it is recognized as a model of good practice, and now we have uh, the, uh, the the social welfare system is referring to us some of the women who 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 don't have a have uh, lack of opportunities, but we made it. It is it is a burden when I I'm talking about social business. It is a, a burden for social business to uh, to have a case management system inside. And this is a good combination of NGO Athena with, with, with its programs and with the social workers, with, with, with case managers, with, with women who can give different psychosocial support and motivation and combining it with trainings, with practice and with, with employment opportunities. So we are like um, you know, we are supporting each other in that, and this is the combination that we are promoting. So it's it's good to to have for social business. It is good to have uh, this kind of support for those women or other groups that are uh, that are uh, the the uh, target group of social enterprise to have this kind of support that will not uh, overwhelm the the business itself. So this is one of the one of the things that I wanted to, to highlight. And, uh, uh, and uh, also uh, uh, I want to say that uh, uh, for, for the businesses, for every business you need passion, for every work you need passion. And this is how we started. Practically we didn't have any, we, any, any support or knowledge about business. We, even the recipes, 
uh, we downloaded 800 recipes from the internet and we tried it all eight months for eight months in our office here and it, in also this transition house we were baking all alone and and we made the consensus if the majority likes what majority likes like this is like a win-win bagel so 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 this is how we started and then we we went to the american embassy actually with that uh, winning bagel the, the bagel that won and they like uh they 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 practically devastated us with the comments so we had to fine tune it with these comments and that is like the recipe that we have now but but actually it is like something that that even more made us like uh, more involved all of us in that adventure so so you don't need a lot of things. And I, one, one more thing. Uh, I wanted to say that we had a support after that. We, we all, of course, because we are not professional cooks, we had the support of few restaurant chefs in Belgrade. That was, they gave us support. And that was like also something that made us on the scene of this fine dining scene in Belgrade, like like upper but also we learned a lot from those people that that it was a hired chef it was one fine dining michelin stars chef and it was one one common guy chef uh from the restaurant and we learned how to like have a low waste of things how to how to keep the the grocery in the good shape for two three days how to everything about technology of food so this is very important and that was practically leveraged from our from 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 the restaurant and other things so this is like in short that's great sounds like a, a phenomenal network you've got <laughs> um mary could you share a little bit on the, on the partnership side as well Yes, uh, without the partnership, it was not possible. And I actually, we didn't have any specific uh, budget for marketing to uh, do marketing through social media or to have billboards or to have like a TV's announcement. But we use our networks and particularly I use my contacts and uh, especially those organizations that they were run by women. And particularly, first of all, for those organizations that they have shelter, which we have when we have the catering that we have provide this kind of training. And it is also open for others to come and learn for other girls, like that they're also it's a good um, way of learning that we have provide. But uh, most people, when they know about restaurant, it is uh, you can follow. We don't have like uh, a lot of marketing for that. It is just like to to use our context to share on the Facebook that which they have their Facebook page and my um, contacts. Um, uh, we are also have some uh, supporters like um, the good supporter was uh, Norwegian ambassador. She was a great lady. She called by herself. It was very interesting. One day I was in restaurant, I received the call and she said that I have some heart that she was speaking English and I didn't recognize that she's the ambassador or so she called. She was learning and she said that Maria, I always try to, when I have uh, even, I try to order. And then it was, she was also was encouraging other friends, especially international uh, organization and particularly embassies. But unfortunately, Kuwait is, has a lot of bad impact because now it is difficult that they order, but uh, the good thing is that now most people know about restaurant and uh, one of uh, the greatest achievements, uh, one of the ladies, she was work uh, as a chef in restaurant. Uh, she became, uh, she was uh, supporting one of the TV, a very famous TV channel that they have cooking show. And she was uh, supporting that program and she became the chef of that TV. And she was part of working with TV and she was working with restaurant. And she was very proud when she said that I learned from both restaurants and now I'm here to teach and uh, learning. That was, uh, yeah, um, this kind of achievement when I see, it's a lot. But when I see from 
financial perspective, sometimes I have some argument with my husband. It's disturbing, but when I see all these achievements, I say that, no, we have done a great job. We have achieved, but I particularly myself, I always say that I have achieved, but I wanted like now these women have that courage to even go to the TV show and that they um, run a TV show. And that is unique. And I'm very glad for all those achievements. That's very inspiring. Thank you for sharing. Um, I think we're getting close to time. So just switching gears a little bit, want to make sure we can cover some advice for our students. Um, so some of us at Columbia are hoping to start our own social enterprises one day. Um, would love to hear what, what advice would you give to someone trying to start a social enterprise or a nonprofit? Um, maybe we'll start with Maya. Well, I have to, to say it is like, uh, you cannot plan everything in a ahead of that. So there will always be flows. For example, we made the business plan, the first business plan, and we revise it immediately when we open. It was not uh, even the, the response to anything that we imagined that it will be. So for example, we didn't calculate it. We said, okay, we have, one thousand US dollars for the rent, and we of course we didn't have money, so we found uh, we we planned in one neighborhood in Belgrade, well, like a posh neighborhood, and then we opened the shop in totally another neighborhood with another client uh, base. So we didn't plan school kids and bagel sandwiches for 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 children, but we were next to the school. Immediately we opened there, so we had to reinvent bagels for, 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 for kids and for, for the neighborhood. Then we, uh, we saw that the shop is something that is uh, a very uh, like you have to sell a lot of bagels. And, and, and the, the, the thing is that nobody knows what is bagel, no, nobody knows what is bagel in Belgrade. They, this is like that you, you we had to brand bagel first and then to market our shop you know to to get so so we we couldn't be a, like a common bagel shop like in new york where you come and buy bagels so we had to uh, um, think of something so after three months we start the catering business actually so we offered for the companies these small bites of bagels so it was like a bagel canapé or mini bagel and then, uh, of course, uh, it was like, um, so I think that uh, it is okay to think big. And it is also for the, for the non, non, non-profit and organization like Athena. It is always, we always think big, we, we plan and we strategize. We have really serious plans and we are like, we, we, we go and, and go back to them. And the thing is that you have to have a team uh, bagel is separate entity. It is like a, we don't have a legal. So do not wait. Uh, do not wait for legal uh, environment because we don't have it in in Serbia. We are like a company, like a big huge company. We are paying taxes. There is no social enterprise legal framework, and we are not. We are we we are not uh, uh, tax deductible or something. Even if we are in employ, employ uh, uh, someone from the marginalized groups and we are helping the, and supporting the community. So do not wait for the perfect legal environment and for someone, something to happen, just go ahead. And uh, the thing is uh, that um, uh, those problems, if you have a team and you have uh, like uh, passion will be, may, will, you have to be flexible and you have to, for example, the same time when we opened the bagel shop, uh, 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 there was a refugee crisis in, 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 in Europe and in Serbia. And uh, uh, we had to respond and to give gender lenses and perspective to the respond to the, to the refugee and, uh, uh, and migrant uh, women and girls needs. So we were both in the in the in the in the in the dead space, and we still um, entered this uh, business area. And uh, it was a challenging thing, but uh, because of the teamwork, we succeeded. In, in, in to, to, to it was like and and the the, the 
the thing is that we had to work double shifts always every day for two years all of us it is like some sacrifice there is a sacrifice for that and uh, and uh, and the tip is also when you are uh, leading the social business it is like you cannot outsource the management so this is like something that i learned also because it has to be aligned with Athena's mission and because uh, and you when you are uh, standing in front and manage the thing, you have to have this mission uh, and to promote it. And it is like really a specific thing. It is not just promote the product. It is like you are symbolizing, symbolizing this mission and vision of one women organization and feminist organization. So this is one of the things that we learned. And, and, and also you cannot run a business if you don't know the technology of, of itself. So, so three of us from Athena, even if we are not paid by, uh, by the bagel, we know how to bake, make bagels. So in the beginning, if someone got sick of the, of the colleagues in bagel, you have to deliver the products. If you take the order, you have to deliver. And that is like something that we had to learn everything from the first step to the, to the last. So it was like a really, really, really uh, like interesting and beautiful experience. So those are the tips. I have a lot more, you know, it is like something that, that um, still we are learning today. And, and, and for example, we had to revise also now in COVID. We, after one week of lockdown, we, the shop was closed, the, the catering, there was no catering, there was no events. So we had to make the agreements with delivery agencies, with like Uber Eats or others, and to totally uh, market our products in different ways. So it is also something that we had to change uh, immediately. And uh, I, I lost. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, Okay, uh, that's for now. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Maya. Yeah, no, I think COVID uh, has made it abundantly clear how important it is to be nimble and, you know, to be able to pivot. And it sounds like you've had quite the journey. So thank you for, for sharing all that wisdom. Um, I know we only have a couple minutes left, but Mary, if you want to just close it out with any quick tips or advice that you have for those of us starting social enterprises. Thank you. I actually, I agree with what Maya have said. I don't want to repeat, but uh, I wanted to encourage and to um, share that uh, for those one that when they have some vision, when they will definitely face challenges, difficulties, they should uh, be ready for different things. They shouldn't just expect that when they have some plan and everything should be successful and then the, if there is any challenge and then they give up. Uh, one of the first, uh, I think I, I always, uh, I'm happy for that. I have that skills. I never give up. And that is something that it has pushed me, like uh, although the challenges and difficulties as always there, uh, but uh, to be patient and to be like, um, uh, think bigger, but uh, it also has encouraged. Uh, I also advise uh, beside all uh, planning, the first thing is planning is one of the best approach to have, but never give up and uh, always think positive and always say that, yes, you will see positive changes and uh, just rely when we receive or when you see something positive. That was my approach. When I see like someone like that, they are happy that they have enjoying their life. It has encouraged me. And uh, now I'm very happy and I'm very glad because most women and especially new um, women that they want to start business, they come and they learn and they ask like how we have started. And now this is something that we could share the experience and knowledge. Um, yes, difficulties and challenges always everywhere, but for a business, starting a business, before everything that you should have focus that you never gave up and you should accept challenges and difficulties and ask for achievements. Thank you. 
Thank you so much. Um, I think we're, we'll all definitely leave here inspired and, and both of your, your stories and your organizations are, are just really incredible. So thank you so much for taking the time to speak with all of us. Thank you, thank for, you having for having us. us. Great. Well, I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Thank you again to Maya and Mary. Um, and I think unless Anna has anything to wrap up, um, we will be wrapping up here. Th thank you all again. Have a great rest thank of your day. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a nice day. <laughs>